Okay, hello everyone, and welcome once again to Chemistry for Engineers. Okay, our discussion for this week focuses on the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, we will try to take a glimpse of the environmental chemistry as we try to explore and discover the concepts about the chemistry of our Earth's atmosphere. So first, our Earth's atmosphere by definition is made up of a mixture of gases called air. So it is composed of first you have the nitrogen which makes up about 78% of the Earth's at atmosphere. The second most abundant gas is the oxygen which makes up 21% of the Earth's atmosphere. The third is the argon and making up 0.9% carbon dioxide making 0.03% of the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, the atmosphere is comprised of a variety of gases as what was discussed. You have nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%, and there are also trace constituents which compose of argon, water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone, which is nearly zero at the surface, up to 10 parts per million by volume in the stratosphere. We also have methane and other compositions. So we are going to discuss the layers of the atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is the layers of gases which protects the Earth from the radiation and cosmic rays coming from the outer space. This atmosphere acts as a blanket because it keeps the average temperature of the Earth nearly constant. The Earth's atmosphere can be divided into five main layers. First, we have the troposphere. Next, we have the stratosphere. The third layer is the mesosphere. Okay, followed by the thermosphere. And the last layer is our exosphere. So let's discuss first the troposphere. Tropos means change. This layer gets its name from the weather that is constantly changing and mixing up the gases in this part of our atmosphere. This layer is the closest to the Earth's surface. On average, the troposphere extends from the ground to about 12 kilometers, 7.5 miles high. The troposphere contains about 75% of all the air in the atmosphere and almost all of the water vapor which form clouds and rain. So as what was discussed, it is composed of nitrogen, oxygen, and other types of gases, including water vapor. Okay, this is the layer of the atmosphere where hot air balloons fly. So we have the troposphere. Up next, we have the stratosphere. Strat means 
layer. This layer of our atmosphere has its own set of layers. So the boundary between the stratosphere and the troposphere is called the tropopause. It is the re region where airplanes fly. The stratosphere layer extends from tropopause to about 50 kilometers or 32 miles above the Earth's surface. This layer contains a thin layer of ozone molecules which forms a protective layer and absorbs harmful UV or ultraviolet radiation from the sun. The high altitude weather balloons flying into the stratosphere for monitoring atmospheric conditions and climate research. Next, we have the mesosphere. Meso means middle. This layer is located above the stratosphere and below the thermosphere. It is the third layer in our atmosphere which is 35 kilometers thick. The transition boundary which separates the mesosphere from the stratosphere is called the stratopause. In the mesosphere, fewer air molecules, there are fewer mo air molecules to absorb incoming electromagnetic radiation from the sun. Most meteors burn up in this atmospheric layer. So a meteor is a piece of rock or matter that has been broken off in space and travels through our atmosphere. When they cross the mesosphere, friction and momentum cause the meteor to burn up and appears as a light crossing the sky. Next layer is our thermosphere. Thermo means heat. This layer has extremely high temperatures and located above the mesosphere and below the exosphere. The boundary between the mesosphere and thermosphere, so the atmospheric region is called our meso mesopause or mesopause. It is the coldest part of the Earth atmosphere. The thermosphere extends from the mesopause to 700 kilometers or 435 miles above the surface of the earth. The thermosphere is the thickest layer in the atmosphere. Only the lightest gases, mostly oxygen, helium, and hydrogen, are found here. The aurora, or the northern lights and southern lights, and satellites mostly occur in this layer. Aurora is a natural light display in the sky, particularly in the high latitude regions that is caused by the collision of energetic charged particles with atoms in the high altitude atmosphere. Next, we have the exosphere, which is our last layer. Exo means 
outside. The exosphere represents the outermost layer of our Earth's atmosphere. It extends from the top of the thermosphere to 10,000 kilometers or 6,214 miles above Earth's surface. In this layer, atoms and molecules escape into space and the higher altitude satellite orbits our planet. Okay, we have temperature versus height. Then, the temperature remains constant below the ozone layer. In the stratosphere region, from ozone layer, the temperature progressively increases to negative 2 degrees Celsius. Then, the temperature ranges from negative 2 degrees Celsius to 92 degrees Celsius to the upper boundary of the mesosphere. Okay, after then, the temperature rises from negative 92 degrees Celsius to 1,200 near the upper boundary of our thermosphere. So how this changes in temperature happens or why it happens, so here it is, we are going to explain this one. So during the day in the troposphere, a portion of the incoming of the radiant energy from the sun passes through the atmosphere, is absorbed and warms the Earth's surface. Then the heat is reflected back from the ground to the tropospheric air by conduction and convection process. The temperature in the troposphere gradually decreases with increasing altitude until the tropopause is reached. So the stratosphere is very dry and the clouds are rare. So as we know, ozone is concentrated in this part of the atmosphere. This ozone absorbs shortwave UV or ultraviolet rays or radiation from the sun and converts them into heat. More radiation is absorbed at higher altitudes compared to the lower stratosphere, so the temperature increases with height. Okay, in the mesosphere region, the mesosphere has the cool, coldest temperature in the atmosphere. It becomes cold enough to freeze water vapor in its atmosphere into ice clouds. The air density in the mesosphere is lower than in the stratosphere below. Due to, to, due to the less air particles, not enough heat is absorbed, which eventually leads to a colder temperature. Apart from that, carbon dioxide in the mesosphere also helps in making this layer cold due to its cooling effect. Carbon dioxide molecules absorb heat energy when they bounce off other molecules. The carbon dioxide releases some of that energy as photons in a process called the radiative 
این نشان Some of those photons travel upwards carrying heat away from the mesosphere. Thus, the temperature in the mesosphere keeps dropping with increase in altitude until it reaches about negative 100 degrees Celsius. Key in this thermosphere layer, the thermosphere has extremely high temperatures. Within the thermosphere's temperature, rise continually to well beyond 1,000 degrees Celsius. The source of the thermosphere's heat is radiation em emitted by the sun. The, thermosphere's, the thermosphere absorbs much of the radiation that Earth receives from the sun, leaving only a fraction to actually reach the surface. UV radiation, visible light, and high-energy gamma radiation are all observed by the thermosphere. Since there is little to no atmospheric gases above the thermosphere, there is no absorption of the heat from solar radiation and so temperatures soar. Next, we have the exosphere. The exosphere is almost a vacuum. The air is very, very thin here, there, and the air is thin. It doesn't transfer much heat to objects in the air, even if the air is very, very hot. The temperature in the exosphere varies greatly and can range from zero to over seven or 1,700 degrees Celsius. It is colder at night and much hotter during the day. Okay, here is a simple representation or the summary of the temperature and altitude of the layers of the atmosphere. Also, we need to consider the effect of CFCs in our atmosphere. So, chlorofluorocarbons and the ozone depletion. So, we already know that ozone layer protects our Earth, our or the Earth from the UV or, or ultraviolet light, but the usage of CFCs reach the stratosphere and destroys the ozone. So that is the reason that the ozone is depleted and it doesn't anymore block the UV light from the sun. That is the effect of CFCs in our atmosphere. Also another major concern now is the greenhouse effect the trapping of heat by gases in our atmosphere. So naturally occurring greenhouse gases are the following. It is composed of the water vapor, the carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. So greenhouse gases that are not naturally occurring we have hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and so for hexafluoride. So these are generated in variety of industrial processes. So the greenhouse effect on Earth. The Earth's atmosphere is slightly warmer than what it should be due to the direct solar heating because of the mild case of the greenhouse effect. So the ground is heated by visible and some infrared light from the sun. So the, these are the effects of greenhouse on Earth. The heated surface emits infrared light. The majority of Earth's atmosphere composed of nitrogen and oxygen are not good greenhouse gases. The small amount of greenhouse gases traps infrared radiation increasing the temperature of the atmosphere. So here is a simple representation of the greenhouse effect. So we have a solar radiation passing through the Earth's atmosphere. Somewhere, some of the, or majority of the radiation is observed by the Earth's surface when it, when it warms, and then it warms the surface. However, some of the solar radiation is redirected by both the Earth and the atmosphere. So, 
some of those internalization is also passing through the atmosphere some is observed and some is re-emitted in all direction by the greenhouse gas molecules which causes the earth's surface and lower atmosphere to warm so what are the effects of the greenhouse so we have so the change from agricultural to industrial lifestyle are the causes of greenhouse. Also, burning of fossil fuels leads to greenhouse effects. Increase of the carbon dioxide emissions of cars and factories leads to greenhouse effects. And deforestation also leads to greenhouse effects. So what are the effects of greenhouse effects? So we have, it leads to global warming, also melting of polar ice caps, flooding at sea level, and warming oceans, which leads also to more powerful storms. So that's all for this week, all about the con components and chemistry of our Earth's atmosphere. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, and God bless.